Lord God, this morning, we turn our eyes to you and worship. Lord, what a sweet time of worship and song, Lord. And now as we open up your word and use this next time to remember you and what you did at the cross, Lord, help our hearts to just long for you. In your name, amen. Good morning and welcome to Grace Bible Church. This is the time in our service where we take a few minutes and celebrate the Lord's Supper. We remember what Christ did at the cross and take a small cup of juice and a piece of cracker and do what Christ told us to do. We remember him. So we're going to do that this morning. Um, we're going to open up our Bibles to John chapter 20. And if you don't have a Bible, these men would love to put one in your hands. Just raise your hand and they'll bring it to you. And if you don't own a Bible, this is our gift to you to keep. This week, I was reading a book by Martin Lloyd-Jones on the authority of Jesus, and he mentioned the passage we'll be reading today. I was struck by how Thomas's faith resulted in such an amazing statement. Leading into this passage, he didn't believe that Jesus had risen from the dead, and as soon as he did believe, his words were, my Lord and my God. This was so powerful to me, I had to talk about it this morning. So turn with me to John chapter 20 and let's read. We're going to start in verse 24. While you're turning there, I'll set the stage a little bit. We're in the upper room and Jesus had already appeared in his glorified body to most of the disciples, but Thomas wasn't there the first time. And so he is doubting the story of his friends. And let's pick it up in verse 24. God's word says, but Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails and put my finger into the place of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples again were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Bring your finger here and see my hands. And bring your hand here and put it in my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are those who do not see and yet believed. Now we all know who Thomas is. He has a re reputation from this story for being doubting Thomas. Personally, I'm not sure that's a fair title. Granted, the only other time we really hear about him is when Jesus was going to raise Lazarus from the dead and he says, let's go to Jerusalem so we can all die with him. So I'm not making an argument to call Thomas Optimus Thomas. But I think doubting Thomas is tough. You stay in John, but I want to read the account from Luke 24 of this passage. In Luke 24, starting in verse 36, this is the first time Jesus appeared to the disciples when Thomas wasn't there. He says, now while they were telling these things, he himself stood in the midst and said to them, peace to you. But being startled and frightened, they were thinking that they were seeing a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, and that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they were still not believing, because of their joy and were still marveling, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. In this passage, the disciples assumed Jesus was a spirit. But if that were the case, then he did not raise himself from the dead. He did not have power over death, and his death on the cross would not serve as an atonement for sins. So he had to show them he was real. And he did this by having something to eat. This is amazing. This is an amazing pastoral moment for Jesus to care for their hearts by proving to them he was real. And so then Thomas hears this story and says he's not going to believe until he touches their hands, Jesus' hands. 
But he saw Jesus in the flesh and says, my Lord and my God. Everything he knew about Jesus floods into his heart in a way that had never before happened. He saw Jesus perform so many miracles prior to this that all the books in the world wouldn't contain them. He heard Jesus' teaching and knew that Jesus had to die. But in this moment, God opened his eyes and he said, my Lord and my God. This reminds me of Job 42 in verse 5 and 6. He says, Job says, I have heard of you, Yahweh, by the hearing of the ear, but now I see, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I reject myself and I repent in dust and ashes. Christian, we don't get the benefit of seeing God. We are the blessed ones that Jesus described in verse 29 of our passage that did not see and yet believed. However, each of us have had a my Lord, my God moment. There was a point when God turned our doubts into faith, when our trust of God meant a transformed heart. For me, I remember sitting on my bed as a young child when my dad explained the truths of the gospel to me and I saw no other choice. However, about 15 years later, when I started to read God's word in a different way, when the veil of emotionalism was lifted and I saw the sovereignty of God in a different way, he was so much bigger than I'd ever imagined. That was my, my Lord, my God moment. What was yours? As we sit here with the bread and the cup, think back to that moment when God transformed your heart and all you could say was my Lord and my God. Remember him and take the bread and cup on your own this morning. If you're here today and by your own admission, you're not a Christian, that moment hasn't happened. I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you're hearing this message. I'm glad you get to join us, and I would love to talk to you after the service. But I'd like to ask you to pass the elements by this morning. And Christian, we're going to take communion on our own. In a second, men will bring a cup of juice and a piece of cracker. The cracker is for us to remember Christ's body that went to the cross and was crushed for us. And the juice is to remember Jesus was pierced for our sins and his blood was spilt. When you get the elements, spend time examining your life, confess any unconfessed sins, and then take communion on your own this morning. Men, come serve us.